today we're going to be talking about centripetal movement. And specifically, we're going to be talking about FP of X today. There's a lot of the equations that we've had, some of the equations we're going into. Today you'll specifically learn more about the force that's pulling it down the hill, the incline in the X direction. Uh, we're going to talk about how to solve for that again and how it keeps a vehicle on the road. Alright, here's what I want to talk about to specifically to start off with. Is there's two triangles. We have our weight triangle. Alright, and this right here is our weight triangle. We've learned about this. This right here is the normal. We said this is the mg, it's the weight. And then this right here, this vector right here, as we've talked in great detail about here recently, is the force that's pulling it down. It's the opposite. And uh, up here we've said because it's the opposite. FP can be found right here because it's the opposite. So it's just the mass times gravity times the sine of x. Hopefully that's starting to sink in. If we take this then and blow this vector up and say that this right here has to be FP. All right, I've taken this and I've made it its own little triangle now. And if we split this up into its x and y components, this is fp in the x direction. And because this vector is going this way, we know that that vector is going there. And what that tells us then is that this is some of the, there's some of this car's weight because of this incline, right? This right here is some of the weight that is now pushing the car where? If you think about this as being a turn, if I look at this view from this perspective, I'm going to draw, you'd have this turn here. And FPX would be going in that direction towards the center of this circle. So there's this amount of force because of this in incline that is pushing the car towards the center. So even without any friction, there is some amount of force that would be pushing the car towards the center of the turn. And because this right here, the angle that we would know, all right, the angle that we would know, as we've said, we would know this angle. So if we said this one, for example, was 10, then this angle here would have to be 80 degrees. 10 and 80 would give us a right triangle, which would make this a 90 degree angle. That means this right here would be 80 and we'd be coming out of there so this would be opposite. So to find the force of P in the X direction, to find the force of P in the X direction, it's going to be earlier we said take mg all right, times the sine of theta because it was up here to take the hypotenuse. Well what is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse here isn't mg, it's fp. So it's going to be fp sine of x. So whatever you had calculated for FP to be, whatever force is pulling the car down the hill, that is our hypotenuse. And we would be taking that then times the sine of X to find out how much of that force is pulling it down the hill is exactly in the X direction. Well, what does that tell us then? That tells us that we have two forces, all right, that keep it on the track. We have the force that's pulling it down the hill in the x direction, which is fp sine of x, and we have the force of friction, which is just mu times n. All right. So we have both of these forces that are pulling it and keeping it on the track. So it, there's a lot uh, of going, a lot of math and engineering going into the roads that we travel on and into NASCAR. Well, let's lose what we have here. Use what we have here. Um, uh, a 2200 kilogram NASCAR is traveling around a 100 meter radius turn. The track is embanked at 30 degrees. Find the following. NASCAR tires reach a mu of 0.75. And, and of course, I'm saying I, I made this up for you. Find the weight pushing toward the middle, which means find F, P of X. So I'm going to real quickly here draw a picture. All right. Uh, there's 30 degrees. I've got this mass on here that's 2200 kilograms 
and now I'm just going to start filling in my information that I know here. So I know that this is mg. I know that this right here, all right, if I want to find fp of x, I got to find fp. So to find fp, we know that fp is equal to mg sine of theta. <coughs> so what I'm going to do here then is say that this becomes 2200 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees. What we find out then is that fp turns out to be 10,780 newtons. Well, how much of that force then is in the x direction? Well, we learned that fp of x is equal to fp times the sine of x. Well, notice I'm using a different thing here because my angle is going to change. Right here, if I were to break this into its x and y components, if this is 30, this has to be a 70. So this becomes 10,780 times the sine, sorry, not 70, sine of 60. So fp of x turns out to be FP of X turns out to be 9,414 newtons. <clears throat> okay, in this problem here, it says find the friction pushing toward the middle. It's the same problem, except now I'm trying to find out how much friction is pushing the car towards the middle. Well, the force of friction is mu times N. So I know this is going to be 0.75, and I have to find N. Well, on our triangle, N is that direction. And we've learned that N, N is equal to, <coughs> because it's on the adjacent side, that it's the Mg cosine of theta, or in this case, 30 degrees. So N is, and we found Mg earlier, mg on the last problem was 10,780 times the cosine of 30 degrees. So in this case, the normal turns out to be 9,336 newtons. So I'm going to put that in for the normal, 9,336 newtons. So what is 75% of that? Our force of friction, in this case, turns out to be 7,000. and two newtons. Find the velocity the car can go without friction. <clears throat> without friction would simply be using how much force is that pulling it in the x direction, which is what we calculated earlier. That's going to be fp of x. So in this case, I can say that the all right, and that's just by the centripetal force. All right, all we have to do is um, FP of X will allow me to go MV squared over R. Well, FP of X in this in this case, as we said, I've got to remind myself again here, is nine four one four. So I'm going to say nine four one four is equal to the mass of twenty two hundred kilograms times the velocity squared all over the radius of 100 meters. And our velocity in this case, then when I do some simple math, turns out to be 20.7 meters per second, or roughly about 42 miles per hour, uh, with absolutely no friction just because it's embanked at 30 some degrees. Now, find the velocity the car can go with, with go with friction too. So what that means is we're going to take the 9414 and we're going to add to it the amount of frictional force, which we turned out to be 7,000. The frictional force was right here, 7,002. So we're going to take the amount of, um, and add these together and set this equal to m 
v squared over r. Well, what we find here is this car can go approximately about 27.3 meters per second or about 55 miles per hour. Now, there's some things about this I want to make sure I point out again. Remember, I made this 0.75 up. I'm sure it's a little bit higher, and there's some other things that we'll talk about that NASCARs do to allow them to go faster. Hey, I hope this has been informational. You'll enjoy what we're doing in class tomorrow. I'll see you on the flip side.